Good evening, Interworld. Sergeant Slack here from Banana One Productions. Welcoming you back to this episode 97 of my hardcore Minecraft playthrough. In the last episode, we did some mining. We did all right. We're up to like 50, uh, 19 diamonds now. And we've got... Uh, pff, to put that there because we're apparently onto a full stat, a full chest of cobble already. Let's see if we can... Can we get two out of this? Yeah, we can. Bosh. Uh, so today, what we're going to do, we're gonna, oh, I can't put them right next to it, can I? Come on, Slack, you know Minecraft. You know how this works. Um, so this is just all going to be cobble overflow. So without much further ado, in this episode. Um, I mean, game companies call it uh, catering to mass appeal, which is basically catering to the lowest common denominator. And organising a raid team was a great thing. That's bad on so many different levels. It's bad for people, it's bad for games, it's bad for all sorts. Sucks and Slacks Hard Card Playthrough. Okay, so in this episode we're going to do something slightly different than what we normally do. We're going to do, we're going to basically combine the fast forward with one of those mining chats that we used to have. But it's all going to be like double speed. Jekyll suggested that it might be more fun to watch the fast images with some not naff music. And I kind of agree with him. I, I think the mining chats might be a good idea. Oh well, we're going to get plenty of mining done today. So there'll be lots of time. For all that kind of stuff. That's where I find my first diamonds, isn't it? I remember that. Um, so yeah, we're going to mine up. Uh, we're going to go fast forward. And then I'm going to overdub something in post. Which means we're going to run for like double the length, basically. So, let's get to some mining. So, welcome to post, guys. This is what post-production feels like. Obviously, it doesn't for you. Because you're not actually here physically with me in post-production. But I'm here in post-production. And I'm watching the footage. And we're going to talk about something. So, I'm, uh, first things I'd like to mention is... I'm only thinking of doing this. If you're worried that the rest of my hardcore Minecraft playthrough is going to be in fast-forward. Then don't. Okay? This is only going to be... This is something I'm trying out in reference with the fast-forward. I'm only going to use fast-forward forward for things like traveling and building and stuff like that where I'm not actually doing that much and there isn't that much happening um, so at those times I'm thinking I'm still gonna have music going on because he's gonna have something interesting to look at but when we're underground and we're mining and all you can see is this two wide tunnel then it's not that enthralling, even with some nice plinkly little music going on. It's not that enthralling. So we're going to do a mining chat, but we're going to mine double speed, which means we get twice as much done in our mining, which is good. And we still get to have a little chat about something. So today, we're going to chat about dumbing down. Um, this is something I've been thinking of a lot with uh, GTA 5 coming out recently and the changes that have been made to that. Um, the way things have been moving. I must stress that I haven't played it yet. This is just what I've seen from other people's playthroughs watching it online. And because one of the fun things about GTA is it was a hard game to play. And there's been several other games that have been hard games to play. And they've dumbed them down, basically. They've changed it. Um, I mean, game companies call it uh, catering to mass appeal, which is basically catering to the lowest common denominator. If their games are too hard, they make them easier so that everyone can enjoy them a bit more. And a classic example of this is World of Warcraft. There's a reason people talk... If you weren't there in vanilla, if you weren't lucky enough to get involved on the ground floor, then there's a reason people who were there talk about it with such fondness. Like, oh, you don't know what it was like at Vanilla Man. It's become like a stereotype and like a bit of a smeg take, but it is actually a thing. Vanilla World of Warcraft was so much harder than World of Warcraft is now. Even like, I mean, BC kind of continued the hardness a little bit and then when you got to Wrath of the Lich King it was just like free epics everywhere and it did, you didn't have the same camaraderie. The reason people talk about it as if it was a thing of legend was because it was. It was so free hard it was so difficult to get things done and the only way you could do a lot of those things was to depend on the people around you and you had a community so you had this community of people that you could depend on both like the people who you were playing with on your server because there was no cross server or or um dungeon finder or any of that stuff 
not only the people on your server, but the people online, the other people playing on different servers. There wasn't there wasn't even Wowhead when we <laughs> when we started in vanilla. There was um, the Hotbot and a few things like that. And it wasn't as in depth and multifaceted as it is now. It was more like some shady instructions that someone had typed in after finding the thing as to where you had to go to find the items to com complete your quest and the people to complete your quest. And that was difficult, but that bound people together through that hardship. I mean, this is something that's touched on quite a lot. It's touched on in The Matrix, you know, that people can't be happy. That They say in The Matrix that human beings rejected the programming when it was all happy and that we need some sadness. And it's true, not because we're like particularly morose people um, and that we need something like that. The thing is, is that <clears throat> you need the lows to be able to appreciate the highs. That's what makes the highs and the lows. It's like a waveform. It goes up and it goes down. And I reckon it's the, it's the distance you get away from that center point on either side is mimicable. So if you've always had a really good life, then you're, on, you're only going to... Yeah, that's going to be your normal. That's going to be your base level. There aren't going to be really good times. And granted, there aren't going to be really bad times, but you're living in a very narrow bandwidth there. If you expand that bandwidth out to great highs, then you also have, great, have to have great lows to offset it. I mean, it's just the way things are in the world. So when you get a game that's really good because games can be really good and they can be really good not just in the sense of playing them they don't have to be the easiest thing in the world to play i mean this is why people talk about vanilla wow with such fondness because raiding was such a difficult thing i never actually managed to get into proper raiding when it, back in vanilla i managed to pug a few things here and there when there was some space going on the server but i never got into the organized raiding stuff and there's people who found who've made lifelong bonds who would never have met before and they've learned a bunch Bunch of stuff and a bunch of skills about coordination and teamwork that they never would have learned before at least they well they hadn't learned up to that point in time and this game came along and taught people that and for me it's just such a shame to lose something like that from a game that was so good that you could teach people i mean some of the best guild masters i've ever had have been people who in the real world have managerial positions and they've been the first people to say that it's actually helped with their job like playing world of warcraft and trying because well like organizing people and managing people is one thing and that's something you do face to face but trying to do that across a computer on the other side of the world a lot of the times with people is like really difficult. I find it hard enough to get a band of six to six, six to eight people all together in the same room like once a week. I mean, we all live within like a stone's throw of each other. It's not like a walkable distance, but it's certainly a drivable distance, which you're going to be doing if you've got a car full of music stuff. Anyway, I'm digressing. The point is, is when you dumb it down, it loses some of its magic. You're narrowing that bandwidth back down again. Remember I talked about the bandwidth with the highs and the lows and they offset each other and they grow together. They're mutually, uh, not exclusive, the other one. They're mutual. They have a mutual relationship. And when one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. And all there or thereabouts. It's not an exact science. I mean, we're talking like hippie energy shit here, man. Um, <laughs> and when you have a game that is that good, and then the bandwidth gets narrowed by the games company so that it can like mass appeal to more people, it doesn't make the game better. It doesn't make the game better for anyone apart from Blizzard, who make a ton more money out of it because it sells to loads more people. That's part of the reason for the rise in um, World of Warcraft's popularity. From a business perspective, they did a really good job. They took a game that was insanely popular and managed to grow it to like... Pfft, eight, nine, ten times its size um, just in the first couple of years. And then, but that a lot of that was already happening before that point. The reason World of Warcraft was growing so much and they managed to capitalize on their growth was because they had a really good game. They had a good product. And then they got a little, little bit greasy. The dollar signs came up and they thought, if we make this just a little bit easier for people, then a load more people will play. And <clears throat> the main thing is, these people will play for longer. So that's what Blizzard did. And that's what started to happen from BC onwards. From BC onwards, it got a lot easier. And people were given a lot more things. They didn't have to work as hard for things. And the community of those people that had been created by this game being difficult started to ebb away 
slowly people started to ebb away from the game and not because they stopped playing and they went to do other things people still played it's just that community that those friends weren't necessary anymore they weren't a necessary part of the game and so people weren't um required to uphold those bonds and what happens in the real world as well uh, away from keyboard is if you don't see people regularly you have to make an effort to see them and when it's people that you don't actually see like physically that's all the more hard once again so it became this big slog for a lot of people and a lot of people lost touch and a lot of people i mean you get into the situation where you're in a guild and you only kind of like chat to people now and again because you don't need those people anymore you don't need to organize yourselves together in a group to get things done anymore and especially now when you've got looking for raid you don't even need people to raid with you don't need to organize a raid team and organizing a raid team was a great thing it taught people a lot of useful skills and it was a lot of fun as well i mean i made it sound a little bit earlier when i talked about management like it was like business but i mean it kind of was business style organization but you have that raid leader and you have all those people and you get things together and you get things done that was the most important thing about playing early world of warcraft is it was fun because you got things done the amount of times people have spent i mean tb talks about it quite a lot he used to be in like a serious raiding guild back in vanilla and they would spend literally weeks weeks and weeks and weeks of them all meeting up once a week heading off to the raid and getting the butts handed to them by a raid boss but they would still come back weeks Week after week after week like world of warcraft doesn't have the same appeal now i want to be excited and enthralled by that game but the things that really drew me into it are not there anymore they've all been taken out they've all been removed and that's mainly the community and the difficulty of the quests it's far too easy now you just point it around the map and you just go and click things it's basically come over here and click things over here and then come over here and click things over there that's why pvp is still one of those things that grabs me about world of warcraft but the problem with pvp is it's really uppy and downy so you would be playing away and you're having a wicked time and then all of a sudden it gets to when everyone goes to bed and the game stop being as fast and there's more waiting around and then that saps your energy for the session in the old days of wow when we used to have like six hour freaking avs and stuff i would spend hours and hours like sat here playing world of warcraft and i haven't had that i got it a little bit when uh, pandaria first launched but it's not even i mean it's kept me low away from the game long enough that i haven't leveled my alts yet and this gradual dumbing down is bad it's bad for games and it's bad for gamers because we're then given everything so i mentioned gta 5 earlier and the thing about gta 5 is now you have this quick save thing and uh basically it starts you off if you fail the mission you don't go all the way back to the start and restart the mission again which it's the first time they've done it in gta and it, i'm pfft, I'm gobsmacked. It's a major change to one of the big play styles with Grand Theft Auto. And I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I know it's hella successful, but I wouldn't be surprised if the storyline doesn't have the replayability in this one that it did for a lot of other people because you're not forced to do the hard work again it goes oh yeah you fell off your bike in the middle of the mission so let's put you back where you were um in the middle of the mission instead of i mean that was one of the good things about gta is you had to go all that way back you had to drive back to the person who gave you the mission you had to restart it that gave you an extra feeling when you were playing the game if you know that you can mess up at any point and you'll restart midway through the mission then you don't play as carefully you don't need to play as carefully you could just like throw your head back and blah, 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 blah. and because it doesn't matter there's nothing at stake i mean this is one thing that, that ties in with games like uh minecraft where you only and in hardcore mode where you only have that one life if i die then all the many hours all the hundred episodes that i've done um they're all gone that's all as many people would see it time down the drain and time that i'm not going to get back but i've learned from the time that i've spent playing this and i've approached minecraft in a whole different mindset because of that reason that if i die i lose everything and i wouldn't play this game that the way that i play it in my hardcore world in in non-hardcore settings 
because you don't have that same constraint and constraints can be really good for creativity you know um like japanese haikus there's a number of set certain amount of syllables that you're allowed in there uh it's 14 i believe uh 13 or 14 something like that on three lines but that restrictive framework means that you have to be extra creative you can't just write all the words in the world to describe something like wordsworth would you have to very carefully pick your words based around their syllables and and try and say what you can with the best words that you have available to use which is great it cuts down on all the clutter and it inspires you to find a different way to present what you would in lots of words in a few words so constraints can be really good for creativity and especially when you're playing something active like um well, not when you're playing something, but when your relaxation comes from something active. So a lot of people like to get in and stick the TV on and settle down. A lot of other people like to play you um, play games, and some people play games and watch YouTube or TV or films. You get the best of both worlds <laughs> if you're one of those ah stimulation type people. So if you're one of those people who you get your relaxation from participating in something active. And then all of a sudden your activity is removed from it then it's not as much fun for you and this is what my problem is with world of warcraft doing the dailies has been such a pain in mists of pandaria it's been awful it's i'm not invested in the story because i'm doing the same quests again and again and again like again and again and again I'm not invested in the storyline, so that takes the story out of it. I'm not particularly getting rewards that are worth spending the time doing it, so that takes the reward section out of it. So there's just nothing left, basically. There is nothing fun about doing the dailies to get the gear. I mean, there was a lot of fun to be had in getting a raid team together and going off raiding. There was a lot of fun to be had in trying to find people to do dungeons with in the olden days. And in the olden days, how old me? Let me get my cardigan and my pipe and my slippers. Uh, there was a lot of fun to be had in getting those people together and it created a real community. And it just doesn't press the same buttons for me. Like it, It's like watching TV uh, playing World of Warcraft now. It's not, it doesn't have that active participation edge that it used to because the quests are so basic. It may, Like I said earlier, it may as well say, go over here and click things. And yes, it makes, more, it, might, it makes it more accessible and opens it up to lots more people. But that again, that, that, if you don't take steps to protect your community when you open something up to lots and lots of, of um, people, then you will get the blaggers. You will get the people who come in there and take the smeg. You will get people who are just running dungeons to get the loot off the first boss and then dropping out. And that's not that never used to happen in the old days. If you joined a group, then you joined a group. And you were there and you were all there. You knew that you could count on your teammates to be there through to the end. Because you all had the same trouble getting into that group and getting something together that you could all go off and do something to get the loot that you wanted. So you weren't going to screw your teammates over because they were in exactly the same boat as you nowadays it's not the same blizzard haven't looked after their community and the community's been the first thing to go that's what's driven a lot of people away from it i mean for me there's still a few things that world of warcraft ticks boxes in that other things don't but a lot of people have, have lost their love of the game by it's dumbing down and it's being made easier and it's a shame it's a shame to see these things happen and I'm a little worried about Minecraft, actually, uh, because one of the things I like about Minecraft is its unapologetic difficulty, unapologetic difficulty, and it used to be even more so. Like, when, when it was back in beta, it was like, yeah, this is kind of, you, you, there was no, um, there was the wiki, and you had to look up things on the wiki, and I like that about the PC game now. I like that it hasn't lost that yet, and I'm really worried for the day when Mojang, hey, find some diamonds at last. They're the first diamonds I've found in this whole mining thing. Man, at least I got a bunch of them. Yeah, pick them up, Slack, come on. Um... I'm kind of worried about uh, Mojang adding in something like they have on the Xbox 360 version. I can see why they did it there, and if your mass appeal, your lowest common denominator, you're going to cater to uh, the console gamer is right in that category. Um, there's, PC gamers tend to be more serious gamers because that's 
you know how it is and that's what PC gaming has always been like it's always been difficult uh, console gaming has always been a little bit more handholdy so you have tutorial levels in the Xbox 360 version um, you have the the crafty bench, uh, you just right-click on it. Well, you don't right-click on it because you're using a controller, but you click some controller button, and it it shows you all the recipes out there. And I'm so worried about them putting that in the PC game. Um, I improved my memory no end by playing World of Warcraft. When there was nothing like Quest Helper, not that I ever used Quest Helper, and there was no in-game version of Quest Helper, you had to go to the hotbot, and then you had to put the... Uh, coordinates in on the map and then you had to find your way around and it was a little bit of a puzzle even when you had the coordinates sometimes trying to find where you were supposed to go and having to remember that six digit number as I tabbed out and back into the game that really helped me to improve my memory it not only helped me to improve my memory on remembering uh, that six digit number and other six digit numbers like phone numbers it really helped to improve my memory with things like meeting people when you meet like eight new people in a row it's really difficult to put faces to those names and the reason for that is is because you go oh yeah hi mark steve sharon sandra bob and you just do that and that's the only time when i'm sat there um when i'm talking to those people and i'm looking at their faces i refresh their name in my memory so i'm looking at them i'm talking to mark i'll be like that's mark that's Mark's face. That's what Mark's face looks like. And it really helps because I'm actively trying to remember Mark's name while I'm looking at Mark's face. So it really helps me to be better at names because I'm consciously trying to remember something in the same way that I was consciously, consciously even, trying to remember those coordinates as I tabbed in and out of World of Warcraft. It really helped, and it helped so much because it was difficult. And it was because it was difficult that I liked to play it. And I'm so worried, as gaming has got more popular in the last few years, my biggest fear is that everything is going to get dumbed down, and it's going to get easier, and we're going to be given anything on a plate. Because that's bad. That's bad on so many different levels. It's bad for people, it's bad for games, it's bad for all sorts. Anyway, I think I've waffled enough about dumbing down. I'm not a fan of it. I hope there continue to be hard things to do, hard and rewarding things to do. So let's let's skip in on past me and see how I'm doing with the mining. And we're back. We've got 11 more diamonds, which is spot on absolutely what we need. I should probably take speed potions with me to get back from there quicker. Oh, you need to be made into blocks, don't you? Do that in just a second. Um, let's get rid of some of our cobble and stuff. So yeah, I have a very little idea how this is going to turn out, guys. I know I say that quite a lot, but in <laughs> this one, um, absolutely no clue how it's going to work. Uh, hopefully it works well. Um, yeah, give me some coal. We can turn into blocks. So yeah, I hope you're liking this, guys. I'm trying to get uh, the best of both worlds, basically, because I know I can't go on like this. We've done like nearly 100 episodes already, and I still haven't built my house, uh, which is not good. Uh, no, neither is that. Which is not good, yeah? We need to get that moving. And I want to do everything in this world on camera. I want it to be like an ultra-hardcore playthrough where you see everything that I get up to um, before my untimely death. Uh, which will happen, I am sure. I mean, it's bound to happen. There's no way I can live forever. Can I? Um, so I want you guys to be able to see everything. But then, at the same time, I don't want it to be boring and nothing ever happen. Because that's kind of what we were in danger of doing. Um, if we're not doing anything like fast forward or anything like that. So hopefully, uh, it will never get that bad. And I've got a full stack of coal blocks. That is superdy poopity. Um, yeah, grand. Hopefully, we can get to something that we both enjoy. So, this is Sergeant Slack from Banana Bomb Productions saying thanks very much for joining me for this episode 97 of my hardcore Minecraft playthrough. Uh, please do comment, like, subscribe if you did. Let me know what you think about the new way of doing things. And I'll catch you next time. Ta ra.